And joining us now to talk about the earthquake is an expert you've seen many times on our air, world-renowned seismologist, Dr. Lucy Jones. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Jones. Always reassuring yeah. to see your face. So let's start with the location. The epicenter of this earthquake, as we mentioned, was about seven miles west of Malibu. Is it near any type of fault line that we should be concerned about? Well, it's, it's near what's called the Malibu Coast Fault. So that's a fault that comes to the Earth's surface right along the coastline, but then it doesn't go down vertically. It dips down under the mountains. And in fact, the movement on it is one side, the north part up and over the south side. And so it's what actually is growing um, the Santa Monica Mountains. And it's, you know, a well-known fault. It's part of a, a, a system we've been watching for a while. I mean, that we just know is there as part of the hazard assessment. Um, the fact that it's near a known fault, you know, most of our earthquakes are. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and also, uh, Dr. Jones, now more than a dozen aftershocks have been reported so far. So how long can we expect those to last? Uh, it's looking like a pretty, I would say, a, a robust aftershock sequence. It's, it's, I think we're up to a couple dozen now. Uh, that have happened over these few uh, hours. And they are dying off with time, as we expect. And uh, assuming nothing gets larger, it, you know, it'll be going on for a few days. Maybe there'll be something, you know, over the weekend type of thing. There's always a chance, like 5% chance for every earthquake, that one of the aftershocks will become larger than the first one. And then we'll change the name and call the first one a foreshock, and the second one becomes the main shock. But it's only about 5% of the time. Let's hope. Uh, and if that happens, then, of course, you have even more, you know, that bigger earthquake then triggers even more events. Of course. Well, we always like to get your perspective. And we started the year with a 4.1 earthquake about 12 miles south of Rancho Palos Verdes. Then a few days later, on January 5th, there was a sizable earthquake near Lytle Creek. So is there any connection between all this seismic activity, or is it coincidental that we seem to be off to a shaky start in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably coincidental. I mean, fundamentally, earthquakes are random. Actually, we say they technically we would call it random about a rate. And that means that like on long term, you average about one magnitude for a month. But sometimes you'll have two or three in a month and another time you'll have, you know, go several months without one. If they didn't vary like that, it wouldn't be random. It would be evenly spaced. That said, um, that's the long-term average is about one four months somewhere in Southern California. Uh, over the last couple decades, it's been about you know, almost half that. So we've had a relatively quiet time. Whether the signals that we're returning to the long-term average or not, you can't tell with just one month's worth of data. Um, you know, and the only thing we can say about it is that when you have a lot of earthquakes, you tend to have a lot of earthquakes. So. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, it's really diff difficult science there, right? Uh, so it means that as long as you're feeling them, hey, think about it. What, you know, what if it did become a bigger one? What if this is a return to a higher rate of, of activity? Are you ready? Have you talked with your family and friends about what you need to do? Do you have water? Have you, you know, made sure that your house is as secure as it can be? All of those are things that you could do individually. And then you'll, you know, if you've if you prepared your environment, it's a lot less frightening to have the earthquake come through. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I have another question for you. You know, we have the shake alert, and I know that many people across Southern California felt this earthquake. We sort we felt it here in uh, the, in Glendale, but there was no sort of early warning. I know that you know in Pasadena, maybe you did get an early warning. So how how is that? It sort of seems a little spotty. Um, I'm actually, let me, I'm, I'm checking this out. There was an early warning that was produced, whether it gets to you before the shaking or whether you've got your app turned on. All of those, unfortunately, are variability that's not controlled by the U.S. Geological Survey. But I'm looking at the website, and they did indeed release a, a, a shake alert for the event. It was issued at... 21:47. Oh, universal time. Of course, that'll be confusing. <laughs> so, it, it, it 33 seconds after 1:47 uh, was when the message went out. Whether or not that was before people received shaking. Uh, is pretty variable. Yeah, I did get that alert and some others didn't, so who knows. Yeah. But Dr. Lucy Jones, it's always comforting to, to have your knowledge and um, you joining us here. We appreciate it and, uh, on your Friday afternoon. We're never going to let you retire completely. You know <laughs> <No>. that. <laughs> <laughs> some point I might move away. you got to watch out. It doesn't matter. We can still oh, yeah. get a hold of you. All right, Dr. Jones. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7 content by clicking the subscribe button for our YouTube channel. And download the ABC7 Los Angeles streaming app on Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, and Roku to watch on your TV.